Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cody Grodsky, and sitting alongside here with me is my co-host, Sarah Filler. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the third and final stop of USA Climbing's National Cup Series. We are located here at High Point Climbing and Fitness in the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, Memphis is located here right alongside the Mississippi River, uh, southwest of Shelby County. There's about a population of 650,000, making Memphis the largest city on the Mississippi River and the second most populous city in Tennessee, right behind the capital of Nashville. Memphis has a great music scene, particularly in the blues genre. Um, it's also home to the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest, which uh, attracts over 100,000 people pretty much every year. And it looks like here we're uh, announcing the competitors. Um, that's Nicholas Foster there on the microphone, a national events organizer for USA Climbing. Um, and what we're doing right now is all the competitors are out on the mats, uh, taking a look at their first boulder problems. Uh, they have a few minutes to go through as kind of a crew, which is an interesting thing about our sport. Uh, everybody get, kind of gets to feel out the starting positions. They cannot pull on the wall or touch any holds. Um, other than those start holds, but they kind of all work together, work through the beta, work through the sequences, and figure out what they're going to do when they do come out uh, and climb on those boulder problems. For those of you following along, uh, the running order from last night's qualifying event uh, for men, we have uh, Dylan Barks coming out in eighth place, uh, followed by Simon Hibbler, Gabriel Galen, John Brock, Zach Gala, Ben Hanna, Bobby Taft Pittman, and finally uh, Nathaniel Coleman. Uh, been hearing a lot about Nathaniel Coleman. He's the first male U.S. climber Olympian. Uh, pretty exciting stuff here. Uh, and he will be the last climber on the wall. And uh, the crowd is definitely looking forward to see what he and all the other competitors uh, have to show us. And for the females, we have coming in eighth place, uh, Ariana Ma Matthews. Um, seventh is Nakaya Sanders. Uh, sixth is Sarah K. Ashton. And then fifth is Sierra Blair Coyle. Fourth with Emma Hunt. Third with Nora Chi. Second with Megan Lynch. And coming in first is Natalia Groshman, who at the past two National Cup Series came in first. Um, she's looking to kind of have a hat trick with all of these and take home first. And we'll see how that goes. And we are here at High Point Climbing and Fitness. Um, this is their Memphis facility. Uh, five facilities across the southeast. Uh, the first two are in uh, Chattanooga, very famous climbing city uh, across the nation and across the world, known for its amazing sandstone bouldering and uh, ease of access um, to the city. Um, the other few facilities in the High Point arsenal are uh, High Point Birmingham, uh, High Point Huntsville, and of course us here at High Point Memphis. Uh, there will be a sixth High Point facility opening up in early 2020, uh, just east of Chattanooga in the small town of Cleveland, Tennessee. Um, and so a lot of big things happening in the southeast. Um, we're here right at the heart of it in Memphis. Yeah, and all of the setters on this tour are pretty well qualified um, and coming from all over the U.S. We have all of High Point's head setters 
uh, for this event uh, with Miles West, head setter of two facilities, soon to be three in Chattanooga. Brandon Tra Travis coming from High Point's Huntsville location, Blake Green coming from High Point's Birmingham location, and he sold on to his level four USAC national route setting certification. And then last with the High Point head setters is Phil Simmons, um, head setter for this facility here at Memphis. He's also holding uh, his level four USAC national route setting certification. Um, in addition to this crew, we have Chris Lacrosso coming from the Summit Climbing Gyms, Jeremy Ho, uh, co-founder of Ether Climbing Center in California, also holding on to his level four USAC national route setting certification. Um, and then Cody Grotsky sitting right next to me is also here setting for this. Um, he's the setting director for all of High Point's gyms at each location. Um, he also has his USAC level four route setting certification. And then we have Nick Okwabja, chief in this event. Um, and he has his level five USAC route setting certification. And then our chief judge for this event is Jim Norton coming from Florida and he's our USAC national judge. Um, yeah, it looks like we have uh, the climbers now moving on to uh, their next boulder problem. Uh, the women climbers here, you can see uh, Sierra Blair Coyle there, and she's coming all the way out um, from New Mexico, uh, excuse me, uh, Arizona. Um, we have, you can see there, uh, some, some excited competitors looking at the beta, trying to figure out what it is exactly they're going to do, how they're going to figure out this first move when they do come out. Um, the men over there looking at the slab, and that does look like a very uh, technical, uh, risky slab. Um, yeah, with this preview too, it's really nice to see all the competitors like working together and trying to figure out beta. It's super helpful and it makes it a little bit easier going into these finals boulders, kind of having an idea and like really going through that discussion. Sometimes like looking at a boulder by yourself, like it's a little bit questionable. So having that discussion is super helpful. Yeah, and you can see there in the uh, camo and black hat that is Nicka Klubja. Uh, coming in from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Uh, very, very experienced uh, national chief route setter. Has set a, a ton of national events. Chief uh, youth bouldering nationals here for uh, a few years in a row. Uh, has also been on the open boulders crew many, many times, uh, as well as countless uh, regional and divisional uh, youth championship events. So very, very experienced chief setter here alongside a very experienced crew. Um, we were very lucky to have and uh, all these folks come in from, from literally all over the country. Uh, Jeremy Ho coming in all the way from uh, Oakland, California, Chris Lacrasto coming in from, uh, from Texas, um, all the high point setters from all over the southeast. Um, it's a really, really uh, fantastic route setting crew and uh, super appreciate all of everyone's hard work this week, as well as, uh, of course, all the staff here at High Point, uh, the volunteers who have been uh, judging and you know, just really taking a lot of extra time to ensure a really smooth event. Um, and then, of course, uh, none of this can be done without our sponsors, uh, the North Face, Petzl, Butora, Cliff, uh, and then the uh, High Point uh, series, bouldering series uh, sponsor was REI. Uh, we thank you all for all, of your, uh, for all of your effort and investment into our sport um, that we're all so passionate and excited about. And we, and we thank you all as well for joining in here um, from all over the country. Um, as, uh, as the competition goes on, if you have any questions, we are checking. Um, the YouTube feed here. It looks like there's already a few folks on. Uh, so yeah, if you have uh, if you have anything to say, questions, comments, concerns, uh, give us a shout. We're happy to talk through it. Uh, we can provide as much insight as possible. We are here, right on the ground, boulders, just about 10 feet away from us, and uh, ready for a fantastic event. Now all the climbers are going back into isolation. Uh, we have Al Smith, uh, local hero, uh, is a fantastic MC who kind of travels all across the country, both rock climbing, MCing, uh, tons of uh, awesome events. He's done the Waco Rock Rodeo, uh, a couple Triple Crown events. He is always the host here at Southern Grit uh, Championship. We're very excited to have him here with us today, riling up the crowd and getting things out of here down in the south. But also, I 
So for those of you following along, uh, we have the 2019-2020 bouldering open season ranking here in front of us. Uh, we do have a number of climbers here who uh, do have pretty high season rankings. Uh, Uh, we do have Natalia Grossman, who is not only ranked uh, first going into this competition, but also throughout the entire season. Uh, followed by Chloe Coscoy, Nora Chi, Maya McGee, Lauren Blair, Akaya Sanders. Um, those are all of our top female athletes. We do also have Sarah Kate Ashton and Emma Hunt, uh, who both competed in Yankee Yard and Dog Patch Boulders, respectively. And for the men, of course, we have uh, Ben Hanna, who is ranking at the, the very top of the overall season rankings with 165 points, followed by Charlie Barron, Bobby Pittman, Matt Fultz, John Brock, uh, Joe Diaz, Sam McQueen. Uh, we do have a stack list here. Uh, other two competitors here, uh, a little bit lower on the list, but not out of contention in any way, shape, or form. Simon Hibbler and Gabriel Gallen. Um, they're all looking to bump up their ranking points for the season and hopes to achieve uh, taking, the, taking the overall season ranking moving forward. Looks like we have our first climber here on the wall, Dylan Barks. Looks like we have a lot of fan favorites here. Uh, Dylan Barks is definitely someone who is a crowd favorite and also looks like you folks online are Pretty big support of him as well. He's figuring out this uh, kind of coordinated run across into a press. Getting closer and closer with each attempt here. It's coming just shy of that fifteen point bonus. This is a Fairly short boulder in terms of uh, bonus points. You just have the 15 in the top. Um, typically, when that happens, the, the boulders uh, obviously they tend to be a bit shorter and typically a bit more potent as well. Uh, this move is very complex, requires a lot of uh, body awareness. Also, a ton of shit. Dylan Barks barely holding on to that left cheetah, cheetah Taijitsu there. Achieving that 15 point bonus. Now he's going into the full press, showing a ton of strength, shoulder stability, hip flexibility, sizing up that finish. Fantastic. First top of the night for Dylan Barks. Not a whole ton of time left to spare. Looks like we've got about two minutes left here before our next competitor out. Let's see what you guys are saying here on YouTube. How much time do they get per problem? Sarah? Um, so they get four minutes per boulder, and that's like pretty, pretty hard stop on that four minutes. 
Um, if they get to that time, they're going to be called off the wall. Um, but it seems like it's not not a poor amount of time by any means. It's like a decent amount kind of trying to work through. And also having that preview initially is really helpful in that. So they kind of have um, an idea of what they're trying to do with these boulders and everything. So they don't have to take as much time um, looking at it and trying to figure that out. seconds here we have our next climber out Ariana Matthews sizing up her first boulder problem here now remember she is fairly familiar with this boulder problem uh, her and the rest of the field did just get a chance to walk around and, and do their boulder previews so she does have a decent idea of what to expect, at least visually. Now this climb is fairly short, um, not a ton of bolts. We do have uh, a couple volumes here, and it looks like uh, a lot of body positioning uh, will be required, a lot of body awareness uh, to achieve the top of this bolt. Yeah, this involves a lot of like figuring out how to work their way around these volumes, and it looks like she's doing a great job at this. This hold on the top of the volume. Um, it is a dual tech zone and it's like on the poor side of that so it's a bit slippery and there's very much no friction on that. It looks like she's wow. and you can see just how dicey that last move is there. Um, that dual texture hold, yeah, there really is nothing on the, uh, the back side of that. It's completely slick. Um, yeah, I gotta be real delicate on that. For sure. And Sarah and I are actually uh, just climbing on this boulder problem uh, not too long ago, kind of dialing in the, the final tweaks with uh, with Phil Simons and Nick Klubja. Um, that finish hold is actually completely blocked, so there is only about uh, about enough room for your for your thumb, maybe maybe a half an inch or so uh, in either direction. Um, yeah, so really have to pay attention to that body position in there and like keep working your way around that volume you're coming off of. Again, so delicate and like we need some slow hands for that. Trying to match up finish. We have a question from uh, Alina Smith. Um, you're probably already pretty aware of women climbing after the men. They are climbing. Uh, Kind of side by side, but it'll be uh, man then woman, man then woman, uh, moving forward out throughout the competition. So you will get to see each gender kind of climbing uh, back to back. Thanks for the question. Looks like Ariana's uh, achieving this 15 point zone without too too much difficulty, but we do know uh, based on her previous attempts that how subtle and slow that you have to move to achieve this last hold. 25 point bonus and the finish. Also, standing on that volume is not not that easy. You really got to concentrate on what you're doing with your feet here too. Swinging the toe around gets one finger. Just just a little bit too fast. Chicken Spy uh, has a question for us from uh, from YouTube. Awesome name, first of all. Uh, so do announcers climb the problems for better commentary or something? That's cool. It is pretty cool. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you. We found out we were commentating about 25 minutes ago. Uh, so we were, we were kind of thrown into the fire here. Uh, we happened to be on the route setting crew. Uh, Sarah came in uh, from Boulder, Colorado, from in her home spot of the gym, where she's actually the head setter. Uh, She'll be setting an event uh, later next week, 
Youth Regional Championship in Indiana. So she just happened to come through here, um, help us out for a little bit, get, get a female perspective on the female boulders. Uh, she's a very experienced et cetera. So it kind of just worked out that way. Uh, all the commentators are not necessarily um, ever on a resetting crew, but it just so happened to be in this case, so we can kind of give you a little bit of behind the scenes coverage on what exactly uh, we were thinking uh, as part of the crew and uh, kind of what the intention was uh, throughout that process. Thank you, great question. It looks like Ariana, this might be her last attempt. She's got just under a minute left. She's no stranger to this position. Slotting that toe in, trying to gain some opposition. She gets one finger, she gets the thumb. She's done it. Fantastic effort by Mariana Matthews. Yeah, just in time too. I don't know if she would have had a chance to finish that boulder up because of the nature of the climbing and how slow and precise it has to be. Um, I think she might have just squeaked it in there. Probably about 35 seconds or so left to spare. Excuse me, uh, probably about 10 seconds left to spare. Uh, moving forward now, we have Simon Hibbler. About to hop on the boulder problem. Men's one that Dylan Barks uh, after a number of attempts, was able to achieve uh, the summit. Let's see what he does. Stylish first move. That shoulder position pretty quickly here. Gets into the press. He's gonna be feeling pretty fresh. This being his first attempt. Slowly. With ease, Simon Hibbler. questions here on YouTube. We do have a few minutes to spare due to Simon's very, very quick effort and subsequent success of that boulder. Margaret Moo, do the setters take differences in height into account? Margaret, that is a fantastic question. It's also a super, super common question. Uh, root setters, whether competitively or commercially, uh, try to do their very best job uh, each and every day uh, on taking uh, heights into consideration. Looks like we're moving forward here on men's two. Dylan Barks strenuously achieving zone 10. He gets 15. Very, very powerful move coming up here for 25. Fancy hand work there. You can see just how stressed he is in that position. Creeping. And he's done it. Fantastic work by Dylan Barks. So now you can kind of see the way that the, the evening is going to go. We have multiple climbers now on the wall, uh, back to back, men climbing, women climbing. Um, Next up, we're going to have Nakia Sanders performing alongside Ariana Matthews. Also, kind of getting back to that question about if rats are take into consideration height and all of that. Um, that's like a huge thing that we focus on, and a lot of discussion in the boarding process very much focuses on that and making sure it's fair and like as fair as it possibly can be. Because um, we have like within each gender category, we have a, obviously like a different 
um, a pretty diverse uh, set of athletes that we're trying to set for. And again, like make it fair and so that it's not favoring one height over the other. Right, and so, you know, as an example of that, we have uh, Nora Chi, our uh, female youth beast sport national champion. She'll be coming out here in a bit. Um, she qualified third. She's uh, by far and away our shortest competitor, uh, probably at around 5'2", 5'3", or so. Um, and then we have uh, Emma Hunt, who will be coming out just before her, who's probably about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 uh, has a much uh, much greater ape index as well. So we do, do try to make sure that uh, the sizing is, is, is appropriate for, for the round of competitors, making sure that people who aren't advantaged, whether they're high, taller or shorter, because actually being shorter can sometimes be an advantage as well, sometimes in some tight tow hooks or bicycles, uh, or fitting into certain size boxes, maybe in a press, press boulder or something like that. Um, so trying to make it as fair of a round as possible, um, and not giving away points unfairly to uh, size advantage competitors. Uh, great question, thank you for that. We have competitors getting ready to turn around for their next boulders. Um, coming out on women's one is going to be Nakaya Sanders. And on women's two, we have Ariana Matthews. Kaya easily achieving that first zone. Ariana as well moving into position to achieve her first zone. Pretty stressful right hand press, no feet on that volume, very slippery volume. So as you can see right there, and she's off. Akaya negotiating the press, trying to find that layback position that Ariana was able to find. And now achieving that 15 point bonus. Pressing very delicately on that foot. Opting to not use the dual tax. It is incredibly slick. Oh, there she goes, right off the wall. Yeah, and again, like watching her come off that volume, those are standing on that volume is a lot, and you have to very much focus on your feet there. Back on the wall. Negotiating those volumes. You'll see Nakaya there, all decked out in E9 clothing. That is her uh, her sponsors. Uh, California company, California Climate, makes sense. Fighting really hard, utilizing that dual tax now. Pressing so hard on that right foot. Looks like she has it. She's attempting to relax just a little bit to prop up her feet a little bit higher. And she's done it. Fantastic work with Kaya. Making quick work of that last delicate move there, too. She sure did. Ariana Matthews now trying to get that five point bonus hold. Interesting fact about Ariana, uh, the farthest she's traveled uh, for climbing is actually China. Um, that being said, uh, her favorite climbing area is actually uh, Farley, Massachusetts, and uh, that's actually my neck of the woods. Uh, being from Boston, Massachusetts, it's a very, very uh, awesome zone, and that kind of that whole Western Massachusetts culture and community there is uh, really special, tight-knit, and just really, really great, nice climbing. Um, if anyone's out there from Boston, uh, thanks for tuning in. She's just got a little bit more time left here. She's taking a little bit of a rest, uh, stretching out a bit. She knows uh, what is to come on this boulder based on her previous viewership of the round with her fellow competitors. Oh, it's 
so close in that five zone. I actually got a little bit more time here though to try to figure out that position. Samuel Van Boxel asking, how long does it take for us to set the finals boulder? Um, boulder round. We actually started setting uh, boulder finals a little bit on Sunday night, getting a feel for things, putting some volumes on the wall. Uh, Monday was the kind of tried and true setting day for those finals, uh, getting some floor running in. We popped those boulders off the wall, um, start setting qualifiers. We popped the finals back on the wall uh, just this afternoon, made some final tweaks based on the qualifying round, based on what we saw and how the competitors performed. Um, and what you see now here, um, and Ariana yeah, and just missing it. Yeah, and a lot of the effort going into these finals bullets too isn't necessarily putting the holds on the wall. That goes like relatively quickly, um, but the amount of time that we spend on forwarding for the most part is a decent amount, and that's like really where we're trying to dial in what we're looking for and um, trying seconds. to get various styles in the past um, that competitors in too. And it looks like women's two it might just be a little bit too much for Ariana. Barks making the first move of the slab boulder. Oh, just missing that hand foot match. Needs a good amount of hip flexibility as well as hip mobility uh, on that entry move. Simon up on the wall here, going real okay, hard okay. on men's two, finessing that right toe hook in, achieving the bonus. Got those double toe hooks in. Crowd is behind Simon here, achieving that 15 point bonus. Pretty terrible hold. Let's show you how strong these athletes are. Yeah, definitely spend some time trying to figure out his next move to get to that 25 points. And these competitors do understand how vastly important it is uh, to uh, flash boulders, do boulders basically as, as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, attempts do matter. Tops are obviously the most important. Uh, getting a boulder done quicker, both get them more points as well as save them. Uh, precious, precious energy moving forward into the round uh, because of the difficulty of, of these boulder problems. Uh, it is important that they uh, save as much as they can moving, moving forward. Struggle a little bit on the first move there of men's three. Those volumes there, you'll see that black volume, their start hold, that's level. Uh, it's a new climbing hold company, uh, predominantly volumes. Um, interestingly enough, those volumes are made by none other than uh, Mike Bikino uh, out of the West Coast, uh, now actually from uh, the Boise area, uh, was in Salt Lake for a good long while, uh, working at the front as a director of route setting there, and now he's uh, chasing his dream, chasing his passion, building volumes. Uh, Mike is actually a fantastic root setter, good friend of mine, uh, national chief, has chiefed youth bouldering nationals uh, a few times now, has been on a number of crews as well. Super, super strong climber. Uh, and uh, Mike, thanks a lot for sending us these volumes. See Simon here on his second attempt on this boulder. He kind of knows some of the beta for this too, so 
Is it a little bit dialed in? Just knows he has to get that final move to 25 points there. Both climbers off the wall at just about the same time. For those of you a little bit more unfamiliar, you'll see uh, you know, climbers on Dylan on men's three here, whereas Simon's on men's two. Uh, Dylan's had a fair bit more attempts already on men's three um, due to the nature of, of the climbing, whereas, uh, <clears throat> whereas Simon here is pulling much, much harder and, and having to deal with a much more physical boulder, really zapping his energy. And he's actually choosing to step away, save a little bit more for the, for the rest of the round. About 15 seconds here, we'll have uh, female athletes on the wall. A couple of you folks here on YouTube are asking for uh, timing updates. There's no clock on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that on my end. Um, sorry about that. Hopefully you can hear uh, Al Smith in the background giving, uh, giving up some timing updates. If I could change that for you, I certainly would, and I'll try to do my best to take a peek at the clock here as the climbers are climbing to give you guys an update in real time. Uh, try to do our best here moving forward with that. Kaya here on women's two and a really, really sweet move here on women's three. Very powerful and show stoppy here. Sarah Kate Ashton eyeballing women's number one. Ariana Matthews here trying to achieve number 15 and she does a really cool opening sequence here. That women's three boulder, that women's three boulder heel is actually just put together by a combo effort of uh, Philip Simons, Miles West, Brandon Travis, and Nicola Klubja. Really cool first move there, honestly. They uh, modified the bombs. You can see how much they're protruding away from the wall. And those are actually a couple of volumes stacked on one another, um, providing the climbers an opportunity to actually perch face out and jumping into that jibber jabber jug, uh, e grips. Uh, makes around that bottom side of the volume. E-Grips is uh, one of our sponsors as well. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of uh, US Economy's National Cup Series. It's like Sarah Kate finessing the last move, coming very, very close with that index finger. So slowly. And she's done it. Looks back at the judge, gets the confirmation. The crowd is very pleased with that. Nakaya making moves on women's two. You can see that in the background there. And that flat hold, that Tokyo is real, real slick. Uh, achieving that left hand Kumiki crimp. Making the bump, oh, so close. You can kind of see the underside of that volume there on the left upper hand corner of your screen. Uh, all those jibs. Uh, while protruding from the volume. That's helped the climbers toe hook a little bit with their left foot and subsequently their right and negotiate that hold that she's brushing right there. Really, really bad sloper. Uh, I'd say it's really unlikely that any of the climbers will be able to control that hold without the toe hooks. I'd say that it is possible. We might see some of our strongest climbers in the field, notably Natalia Grossman, Megan Lynch, Nora Chi. Uh, they might be able to do that. I'd say it's probably unlikely they'll be utilizing those toe hooks throughout that sequence to achieve those subsequent Ten crimps. So we've got movement here on women's three. Ariana styling that first move again. Achieving 15. Two climbers on the wall. Both getting high. Nakai again, really making use of those toe hooks too on the bottom side of that volume. Exactly, yeah, she's sinking those toe hooks in really well, real psyched on that. Going up a right heel hook, it's possible. But 
I will say I uh, did actually try that move a couple of times with that right heel hook. It's really hard to maintain tension in an opposition with that right heel uh, rushing out to that left hand hold, that 15 point bonus hold. Uh, it is possible, probably a little bit more difficult uh, than simply kind of doing a little bit of a moon kick or a pogo with that left leg. Yeah, it's a super high heel, not necessarily like pushing you in the direction you're trying to get to gain 15. There, and that left hand cramp, right hand press on that uh, kilt or kaiju hold. That was actually a hold shaped by none other than Jimmy Webb himself, a uh, little southern boy out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, originally from Marysville, Tennessee, uh, but most notably known for his, uh, his time spent in Chattanooga developing, climbing. Fantastic, fantastic athlete. One of the best in the world, if not maybe the best boulder in the world. Uh, now living out on the West Coast, um, I believe in the Sacramento area. Got Dylan Barks here on the first move of men's four. Look at the power. Those holds are not very good. I like these in pockets. Fairly deep. Those are some kilter holds as well. Powering up. Final boulder here, men's four. Will he summit? And he does. Boulder display. considering all the other boulder problems that he has tried uh, throughout the rest of the round. Flashing men's four, being such a raw power, if any of you guys remember uh, the old uh, PCA days. Uh, pretty reminiscent of that style of boulder. And Barks putting in work. Let's see Jim Norton there in the black USAC polo, our chief judge out of Florida. Great, great, great guy. Uh, Jim Norton, we thank you for all your effort that you put into USA Climbing over the years, uh, as well as all the other RCs, divisional coordinators, coordinators, national chiefs. Um, if you're out there listening, watching, uh, thank you so, so, so much. And I truly mean this um, for all the efforts. It does not go unnoticed, and these events do not happen without your continued efforts. Simon's still trying to figure out the first move on this uh, men's boulder here. Trying a little bit different beta, a little bit of a run and jump. We've got Gabriel here on men's two, John Brock on men's one. Gabriel biceping his way through those Kamiki slices. Actually, kind of a cool thing about the hold oh, that he actually just slipped off of. Uh, little Squadron, another one of our uh, hold sponsors here. Those new Squadron volumes are nowhere else in the country right now. These are. Uh, United States of America first. Those shapes do not exist on any other walls. Uh, so your first look here. Got a chance to set with those a little bit. And they're, they're a really fun shape to uh, to work with. They protrude so far away from the wall. Uh, wow, a lot of creativity. So thank you, Squadron. Simon again through the first few moves on this boulder here. Just trying to line up this volume. Left hand there is really bad. He's actually pinching uh, the middle part of that flat hold. The slab there is uh, exactly six degrees slabbed out. So um, holds there can be a little bit worse because if you can position your hips appropriately, you will be able to find a nice balance point, which it looks like he is trying to do here. Gabriel not quite figuring out the power move, negotiating those squadron fifth volumes. Simon sitting on the dual text there. Oh! 
right off. You can actually see a little bit there on the lower left-hand side of that triangle volume, right where his foot slipped off, actually. Yeah, and a lot of these slab bowlers in this finals round have like pretty delicate feet and mostly volumes that they're trying to stand on. So watch, watching him run and jump into that too, as you see, just saw him fall off the end of that. Um, not, not the best feet he's trying to jump into. About one minute remaining, 55 seconds or so. John Brock getting close on men's one. They don't have a camera on him right now, but let you folks know he is in the press on that cheetah to G2, crossing over with his right hand. He's done it. Fantastic effort by John Brock. We got Gabriel making moves here on men's two. It's G15. Gonna have to creep. He's done it. Fantastic work. Again, with not that much time left, too. And the female competitors are back on the wall. Going to get a first look here at women's four. That'll be Ariana Matthews, followed by Nakia Sanders, Sarah Kate Ashen, and Sierra Blair Coyle on women's one. Jerry Blair Coyle, a pretty prominent figure in the competition circuit. Uh, favorite climbing area outside, at least, is uh, Free Straw. And for perspective, hardest rock climb that she has ever achieved. Z10, and we do have a flash here by Nakaya on Number two, excuse me, women's number three. Fantastic effort. Very powerful and coordinated. Boulder problem achieved by Ena athlete Nakaya Sanders. Sarah Blair Coyle making moves here on women's one. Sarah Kate Ashton, SK for short, making moves on women's two. Crossing to the right hand. Bonus hold matching. Fantastic, fantastic effort by Sarah Kate Ashton. Not something that uh, the root setters saw in the flooring process. And very difficult move, and she's done it. Yeah, especially with that high heel hook again, too. That's pretty impressive. SBC making easy work of women's one. And we have women's four happening now. Ariana Matthews achieving the bonus hold, zone 10, throwing a high left heel. Making moves. Could be a pretty exciting finish here. That blocks volume, blue pill, excuse me, not super good. And she's done it. By Ariana Matthews. That upper head wall is not too easy. That blue pill volume, another one of our National Cup Series sponsors. Very, very slopey hold. Uh, she was able to tick tack her feet across the volume there. And we have had a three, excuse me, four for four on all of the women's boulder problems in a pretty quick fashion. Yeah, that blue pill at the end of women's four is not that good. Like, really impressive to watch her match on that. We have someone here on YouTube commenting comment section, Asakari Burrit, asking how many men's rounds so far? So uh, there's been a few men's rounds. Uh, this weekend we've had uh, one qualifying round, which set us up for our uh, finals uh, finals athletes here. Um, 
throughout the season we've had three National Cup Series events. The first one was the Yankee Yard in Albuquerque, Mexico out of Stone Age Climbing Gym. Uh, the second at Dog Patch Boulders, that was a, a touchstone uh, project. And uh, each one of those also had a qualifying round as well as a finals round. And then of course our round uh, that I mentioned earlier here uh, in Memphis, the qualifiers and finals. Getting a little bit of uh, time clock left, we have 50 seconds left of rest uh, before our uh, finalists hop back on the wall, the men's finalists. Uh, you can get a little bit of a view there of the root setting crew. That's uh, Chris Lacrasto on the left hand side. Um, as you can see him there in the, uh, the glasses and the, the luxurious black hair. Uh, sitting right to his side is Blake Green, Jeremy Ho, Brennan Travis, Philip Simons with the ever present Mohawk. Thank you guys so much for your efforts throughout this week. Coming up on the 15 second mark. We're gonna get our first look here at Zach Gala, Southern local. Stone Summit strong man. That boy has been putting in work this season, not only on the competitive circuit, but also outdoors, uh, climbing super notable Boulder Problem Tilted World. Uh, for those of you familiar, V13 Southern test piece, making very, very quick work of that Boulder Problem. He's also competed at a number of Southern events in the past, um, competed in the finals last year as well. We have Gabriel here achieving the lat hold volume on men's three slab. Moving real slow. Popping that left foot over very, very delicately on the dual text. And he's achieved volume, it does have a crimp on it, and now the 15 point bonus hold, left foot on a very, very, very bad hold, you can barely see it under his left toe there, throwing in the heel hook, that was just not enough. Given another attempt to men score here. These pockets again, like on this overhang, are not that good. So it was impressive to like watch him kind of more or less one arm through that. And again, like watching that, it's, it's difficult for sure. A little bit more on Zach Gallo. We did uh, give all the athletes when they're in isolation a little bit of a sheet to fill out on getting to know the athletes, uh, share a little bit of information with you folks. Uh, Surprisingly enough, Zach Gala's spirit animal is none other than uh, Bobby Taft Pittman, who is coming out here a little bit later today. Uh, so we're about, we're about to find out if that's true or not. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what exactly that means. Simon pulling through on those pockets shows you just how difficult they are. Uh, two fingers, definitely not three, and just yarding on them. Uh, pure finger and tendon strength. Nothing subtle or delicate about it. Slowly, delicately, Gabriel achieves the starting position of men's three. Getting a full body press there. Setting on that flat hold volume. Feet on the dual text, just not quite enough on that level volume. For those of you following along uh, with the entire series, uh, the first two National Cup Series events, uh, the qualifying rounds were uh, a little bit, a little bit easy for the men. 
putting a lot of pressure on the root setters and the competitors on the finals round. Uh, this time around, the qualifying round was exceptionally difficult. Uh, spoke with a lot of the competitors uh, after the round, and they were gassed. Uh, there was one competitor in particular who had all five fingers were fully bleeding, uh, trying so hard on each and every boulder problem that they attempted. One minute remaining here. Yeah, that, the qualifying round too did a really good job at separating the fields, especially going into finals here. Come on, dude. Another attempt there by Gabriel Galen, vertical world athlete. Simon pulling hard, just not enough left in that left bicep. Really feeling pretty exhausted from the uh, previous boulder problems and finals, but also the qualifying round uh, less than 24 hours ago. Ten seconds left. John Brock trying to get ten points. It's so close. See the female athletes now. We're gonna see Nakaya on women's four, SK on three, SBC on two, Emma Hunt on women's one, Emma Hunt, a Stone Summit athlete. Uh, one of Zach Gawa's uh, teammates. I'm making quick work of the entry moves. By far and away the tallest athlete here, Emma Hunt. And you can see right there where, you know, a lot of times there's a common misconception of being tall and climbing is gonna be advantageous. If you saw, she was actually using her knee to try to achieve that uh, second volume, whereas a lot of the other competitors were able to bring up that high right foot. So it's not always the case where being taller uh, is advantageous. Left hand corner of the screen there, we have Sarah Kate Ashton. I believe that was a flash. As well as Sierra Blair Coyle making moves, achieving the finish. Another flash. Great job by Sierra Blair Coyle. Emma Hunt there on women's one, Nakaya on women's four. Those are the only two athletes left. With the two flashes of women's two and three. Emma Hunt rocking that stone summit jersey. Really, really strong climbing team. Very prominent here in the southeast as well as nationwide. Uh, and even, even worldwide, uh, they have put out some fantastic athletes through the system. Those of you familiar know very well what I'm talking about. Emma Hunt trying so hard and just not finding that body positioning on that upper volume and that dual text flat hold jib on the right side there. Yeah, it's so delicate to work around those volumes. Interesting uh, kind of aspect here of competitive climbing as well is that you can kind of see there on the upper right hand of your screen that uh, blaring, blaring spotlight. Uh, it is December. But we are here in Memphis. It's not exactly cold, it's sitting around 60 degrees, and inside the facility here, probably quite a bit warmer than that. Uh, these holds, as the climbers climb on them, the spotlights are on them, things are getting a little bit warmer, uh, getting a little bit harder to, to grab onto, uh, making each and every climbing hold that much more difficult. So a lot of times it's uh, kind of a toss back and forth between is it better to come out first, come out last, um, I think depending on which athlete you would ask, honestly, uh, depends on their climbing style, uh, what they would prefer. Nakaya here making quick work of women's four, at least the entry sequence. Achieving a 10 point hold, that flat hold dual text crimp. Pretty sharp, oh my goodness. Very, very strong move for that Kamika crimp, Gaston. Matching her feet. Right foot on the volume, you see it slipping there a little bit. She does the bump, oh, just not quite enough on that cheetah. Cheetah fiberglass volume there. Cheetah, another one of our NCS sponsors. Thank you so much for supporting the National Cup Series. Emma Hunt, 
blindly finding that thumb, find the position. He's done it. Experienced, experienced athlete. Uh, I've been lucky enough to set with, with Emma, or for Emma, and a, a lot of her Stone Summit athletes uh, for many, 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 many years now. Very strong climber, great head game. Um, very excited to see her here, some of the local favorites uh, here at a National Cup Series event, very high level event. Uh, it's cool to see the youth coming up through the circuit and getting that experience, which honestly could be to, uh, honestly, future, future Olympians. Zakaya here with a bit under a minute left to get through this boulder. Nakaya, the only female athlete left on the wall that can add a definite layer of pressure. They're not blind or deaf to what's going on around them. Uh, they do. Nakaya definitely knows that she's the last climber on the wall now. She's heard the, the cheering and screaming for other athletes. Um, puts a little bit of added pressure when you're the only one left on the wall and you know that you need to perform not only for yourself in the ranking, but honestly, the, the crowd's expecting a bit of a show too. Ten seconds left here until the male competitors come out. We're going to have uh, Gabriel on men's four, John Brock on three, Zach Gala on men's two, and all the way out from the southwest, Ben Hanna. And Ben Hanna is, for those of you who don't know, a very, very strong athlete, both on the competitive circuit, on the indoor climbing scene, but as well as outdoors, uh, a sense 514. Uh, and honestly, a very well-balanced athlete, uh, all things considered, comparatively to his peers, uh, performing very, very well. Uh, outdoor sport climbing, indoor sport climbing, outdoor bouldering, indoor bouldering. A lot of times what you'll see is specialists. Uh, ben Hanna is not that. He is a very, very all-around uh, athlete. Excited to see him here traveling, making a long trek uh, from the southwest to here in Memphis. Zach Gala front row center on men's three and making move on the squadron volumes wrapping that right hand around throwing up a high left heel switching it to a toe trying to find that optimal hip positioning for those of you who can't see it Ben Hanna making moves on men's one achieving that cheetah volume pressing for those of you who remember Casually topping men's number one. Very, very strong presentation by Ben Hanna. And now he's got a fair bit of time left to rest for men's number two. Again, it's interesting to watch uh, the next few male competitors come out on men's four. Uh, Dylan seemed to make real quick work of that. And as they're showing now, like those pockets again pretty hard and especially to pull out of that roof and onto that volume. Have my boy Eddie giving us a shout out from uh, Salt Lake City. Bowlers look rad. Nice work y'all. Appreciate you Eddie. Uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. making strong moves on men's two. Second attempt here. Fancy footwork, achieving that Gaston hold. Trying to figure out the right body position. It's not very straightforward. Going back to the Gaston, he's just off the wall. Vertical world athlete, Gabriel Gallen. Making strong, strong work through the bottom middle half of men's number four. Utilizing those new cheetah ball volumes. Kamiki pie slices. And if it's up to him, he would love to grab a hold of the final hold of the whole entire National Cup Series, for at least for the men's round. Kilter pocket, sitting pretty there in purple. Kind of have a little under two minutes left. Zach Gala on the wall. John Brock on the wall. 
pressing real hard John Brock there on those level volumes. Not quite enough to bridge and hand foot match. Requires a ton of flexibility. We have not seen a top yet on men's number three. Zach slamming a knee bar. Throwing that high right heel, crossing over. He's got a minute left. Looking back at the crowd. Solid top by Zach Gallo. Yeah, it's interesting to see all the different beta trying to establish on men's number three, too. Anyone out there listening, if you've uh, seen the initial athletes come through, finish up their uh, finish up their boulder problems, if there's anyone in particular that you would like to speak with or ask questions to, uh, give us a shout here on the, the YouTube link. Be happy to pull them in, uh, get their perspective as athletes, um, provide you guys a little bit of in-depth athlete information. Gabriel looking real good on that pocket, that kilter pocket. Showing us that power and that shrink in that left arm, but not quite having enough to move forward to that 10 point bonus hold. It is very, very small, about between a quarter and half pad crimp uh, up on those cheetah ball volumes. And now we have the women back on the wall. SBC on women's three, that's Sierra Blair Coyle. Sarah Kate Ashton on four, Emma Hunt on two, Nora Chi on number one. Nora Chi coming out of uh, the Northeast Beta Climbing Team, Connecticut to be exact, had a very, very strong qualifying round. Got SBC style on the first moves on women's three. Nora pressing fairly hard on women's one. Emma Hunt throwing that high right heel. Nope. Thinking about it and falling off there, unfortunately. SK making moves on women's four. Throwing up to that slope or that blue pill. This flash would be very, very important for her if she can achieve it. Not an easy move as we've seen. Matching her feet, tic-tacking around, very, very delicate, slow climbing. She bumps, oh, just not quite enough. Looking at her hands, skin is thin. Those fiberglass volumes are not friendly. They do take a toll on the athletes, uh, especially when they're slipping off them and trying so, so hard uh, on each and every attempt, especially considering qualifiers and how difficult of around qualifiers were. Skin is a commodity right now. Emma Hunt styling the middle section here of women's two. Making quick work of that first bump move. Falling just so close on that left hand move on that Kamiki left hand crimp 15 point bonus hold. Yeah, not even trying to get that high heel as the other athletes did. Um, maybe it's because she's a little bit taller, she's a different beta. That, that's actually a really great point. Different beta, different athletes. Uh, like we've mentioned, Emma being one of the taller climbers here, maybe the tallest climber. Look at Sierra Blair Coyle there, styling that left hand jump move. Uh, for those of you who follow her on Instagram, she's no stranger to competitions, as well as those comp competitive style moves. They're just as much about power as they are about body positioning, learning the movement, becoming educated on how to train the body. Come on, Emma! And it's showing here in Memphis. Nice, Emma, come on! SBC, oh, so close, she got both hands on that Jimmy Sansung Kaiju, just not quite enough. SK making work on women's four, matching that nasty left hand hold. Emma Hunt falling off of women's two there, SK achieving the blue pill volume, she's no stranger to this move. Kind of wrapping that left hand, trying to find a position, tic-tacking the feet around. She knows what she has to do here. She has to bump that right hand. Not quite enough left in the tank. Come on, Emma! Nora still trying to figure out women's one. 
Tick tacking her way along, lay backing, getting a little bit of chalk here. SBC style in the first move as most of the athletes have so far. Pressing her way over to that slice. You have one minute remaining. Flat hold cramp, full text. Not a great hold. About a half pad. Sierra, oh my goodness. Stalls on the hold. Now trying really hard, achieving the position. She, she sees it, she's eyeballing that finish hold. We also have SK, Nora Tops. Emma's got another attempt left in her. SK matching that nasty, nasty right hand crimp. Achieving the 15 point bonus. And the blue pill volume. Third time's the charm. Oh, not quite. Yeah, they have about 20 seconds left, so yeah, last, last 10 seconds. 10 seconds, looks like Emma and SBC are both going to wrap that boulder up, respectively. Time is up, and we have the men back on the wall. John Brock, Zach Gala, Ben Hanna, and of course, none other than Zach Gala's spirit animal, Bobby Taft Pittman, coming out of Florida. For those of you who don't know about Florida, there is no climbing, literally none, anywhere. They, they come up to Chattanooga, Rocktown, horse pens, if they want to do any outdoor rock climbing. But somehow, some way, these Florida folks are some of the strongest athletes to come out of the United States. You also probably haven't heard about them because they tr tend to go under the radar, much like their mentor, Mark Allen Mercer, coming out of Agui, now part of uh, the Momentum climbing team, uh, living in Seattle with his girlfriend, Moy. And they have been a fantastic, fantastic asset to our climbing community, specifically in the Florida, uh, Florida community. And anyone coming from the Southeast, Florida community can attest to that. Uh, Miles West, actually, a uh, member of the Root Setting Crew, coming out of that uh, Mark Allen Mercer School of Thought. John Brock doing work on the first couple moves of men's four. Van Hanna style on the bicep moves of men's number two, achieving that squadron volume five points. Trying to style that 10 point, but needs a little bit more finesse and a little bit less muscle to achieve that position. Aubrey Wingo wants everyone to know that she loves little Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Taft Pittman, you do have a fan out there in Aubrey Wingo. Uh, a lot, a lot of support here on the YouTube link for all of our athletes. Gabe, Nakaya, Ben, Zach. Sarah Preston wants us to know that Emma is the female youth A speed world champion, not just Zach's teammate. Sarah, you are 100% correct. Uh, forgive me for missing that. Juggling about, I don't know, 100 or so <laughs> papers here in front of us. Uh, but you are uh, absolutely correct. Emma is a fantastic, fantastic athlete and showing a uh, very, very promising future here out of the Southeast and ultimately the United States. I would not be surprised to see her uh, in the 2024 Olympics um, based on where she's been, what she's doing, and uh, her trajectory so far. Zach Gallo making work on men's three, doing about what we've seen so far. Climbing real, real slow on men's number three. John Brock pulling hard on those fingers. On men's four, hanging. 
not quite enough. Seems to be a little bit lackluster in the power department there. It's been a very, very physical weekend for all of the athletes. Trying to give him men's two, another go. Ben, no stranger to competitive rock climbing, knows he has one minute left on the wall, trying to achieve as many bonus points as he can, if not a top. Thrown around, and for those of you that know Ben Hanna, he is an exceptionally powerful climber, very, very strong individual. Be no surprise to see him top men's two here. Seconds left. He's trying to gain some more zones. So we have about 10 seconds here left for the men's round. And Women's athletes are on the wall, moving forward here, achieving the very, very stressful part of the night for all of the athletes. We have Emma Hunt making stylish work of men's three, achieving that jibber jabber jug. Most of the women's athletes have had not too much trouble with that first move, uh, but it looks good. It's a, it's a stylish move, definitely a crowd pleaser, the folks here, doesn't matter if it happens once or eight times, they're very, very excited to see the, the raw power and strength of those athletes. Got SBC, looking oh so fine on women's four, bicycling that cheetah hold, making moves out to that flat hold crimp, that's been uh, a bit of difficulty for some of the athletes, she matches when she does that Kamiki crimp, surges out to the Blue Hill volume. If she gets a flash, oh, not quite. Flash there would have really, really helped her rankings. Can't quite say off the top of my head where that would have sat her, but it certainly wouldn't have been a bad thing. For those of you playing along or maybe looking on USA Climbing's website, uh, right now our rankings are as such. Uh, in first place, Sarah Kate Ashton, followed by Nakia Sanders, SBC in third place, Ariana Matthews, Emma Hunt, Nora Chi, and of course we have not seen Megan Lynch or Natalia Grossman yet. Uh, Emma Hunt and Nicole, Nora Chi have not seen all of the Boulder problems yet, nor have uh, Ariana Matthews. Um, Come on, Emma. So you know, those rankings are far from complete. Uh, that's just what we sit right now. Emma. Come on. Uh, Emma making good work, oh, just falling off, matching that kilter kaiju hold, that 10 point bonus hold. SBC tic tac her way, thugging along on that. Blocks Blue Pill volumes. Kyle and Julian McCoy, thank you both very much for sending us those holds. Uh, NCS event is much better for it. We appreciate all that you do for us. Megan making her way so close on getting that ash in the first boulder there. Megan Lynch just missing it. Megan Lynch, definitely one of the top US athletes uh, showing you just how technical and difficult these boulder problems are, especially the first boulder problem here. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit, um, you know, not confusing, but difficult to see the level when you have such a strong round of finalists. Just because a climber comes out in eighth place uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they're all that much weaker than the climber that comes out in first place. Qualifying event is just as much of a strategy as finals. Um, so we get to see the level here throughout. You can kind of see men's one there uh, getting tried a little bit. Um, this just in from our USA Climbing technical delegate, Chris Danielson himself, both Dylan Barks and Gabe Gallen 
Uh, both of these climbers, there was a bit of a miscommunication from the judges about whether there was a limit on attempts. Uh, you can definitely see that previously in qualifiers, we had a modified red point round. There was a limit to eight attempts on those little problems. There's not a limit on attempts here in finals. Uh, so just a bit of miscommunication there. What this means is that Dylan on uh, men's boulder problem number three and Gabe on boulder problem number one will get two more minutes to try each problem. Uh, so this could actually be a major X factor here in the competition. Not something that we foresaw, but something that will add to the spice and excitement of the event uh, at the end of the round. And this, this just totally throws the men's round uh, into we won't call it oblivion quite yet. Uh, we do still have uh, some very, very strong athletes to come, uh, but something to consider. And right there, you see Gabe on men's one. Ten seconds left. Pressing very hard on that flat hold. Not quite enough in that left shoulder. So a little bit of rigmarole here with the uh, miscommunication. Nothing that will ultimately affect the way we communicate the events happening here with you. Got Bobby Taft Pittman there on men's number two, brushing those holds as he should. It is getting warm here in Memphis. Uh, spotlights are on, crowd is getting loud. See Zach Gal on men's one, and I'd be surprised if he did not flash this boulder. This boy is southern strong, and he can pull on these pockets. Let's see what happens here. Zach styling the first move. Achieving number 10, surging to 15, throwing that heel over the side, second guessing, putting the right toe in that kilter pocket, smashing, smashing men's four. As predicted, guns to the crowd. Zach Gallo, ladies and gentlemen, on the flash in men's four. Excitement is not over. Bobby Taft Pittman on the, fl on the flash attempt of men's number two, achieving 15. The crimp, the penultimate hold. Seems to be pretty comfortable. Too. Crowd favorite. Bobby Taft Pittman, rocking that ABC jersey, salutes the crowd. Goodness me. Fantastic, fantastic efforts the by Bobby and Zach. The, yeah, there go. And there's Olympian Nathaniel Coleman slowly but surely and stylishly showing us how men's one is done. We have not heard the last from him, both in this competition as well as the Olympics to come. See Zach trotting off there, very happy with his performance. Ben Hanna on men's three. <coughs> Brushing up the start hold of men's three. We have still yet to see a top on this boulder, too. Rockapoo asking who our favorite climber is. Uh, Sarah, who's your favorite climber in this event? In this round? Men or women? Uh, both. Yeah, narrow it down. Pick one. <laughs> for, for, for the men's field, who's your favorite climber? Men's field? Oh, man. Maybe, maybe Ben Hanna. 
Ben Hanna? I think, I think so. What about you? Men. Uh, let's see. Male athletes. Uh, you know what? That's a great question. You know, I'm kind of back and forth. You know, obviously I'm a southern, southern native. Uh, seriously rooting for Zach Gala. But honestly, Nathaniel Coleman, I've been studying for him for years. Uh, watching him climb in these finals, it's always just so cool to see the performance that he can put on. Uh, so a little bit rooting for him to see if he can really just pull out a flash of all four of these boulders. That would be very, very impressive, but certainly not unlikely. For those of you who've uh, watched uh, Boulder Nationals the past few years, uh, Nathaniel did not win last year by a simple one foot slip on men's number three. Um, but in uh, many years prior has actually not even fallen in men's bouldering finals the open national championships so he's no stranger to competitions and no stranger to this, these types of events would be really impressive to see um, Ben Hanna here on men's three figuring out the body positioning on that level volume dual text hold matching that flat hold just not quite enough Ben has 10 seconds left with this, so he just needs to get through to get a few more points on this bullet, but it seems like a little bit of time left for that. And we have the women hopping on the wall now. Got Emma Hunt there brushing down women's four. Women's three, two, and one are all in sight. We're gonna get our first look at Nora Chi on women's three. Trying to find that body position, looking into the spotlight. And what we have here, a very special guest, Jeremiah Ho, out of Northern California, Oakland, California to be specific, one of the root setters on this crew. Uh, major asset here uh, throughout the event, specifically on the men's round. Uh, Jeremy is known for his bouldering uh, prowess, notable uh, ascents throughout the country, v up to V13. Uh, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Thanks for bringing me out. Super psyched. Jeremy, what do you think of the, the women's round so far? Uh, across the board, it seems like there's been uh, quite a bit of diversity. Uh, people are falling all over the place. People are topping all over the place. Um, all in all, a little bit risky, a little tricky. Uh, seen, seen some girls getting through the meat and potatoes of the boulders and taking some diggers at the top. It's been pretty, pretty awesome to watch. You know, what's really interesting about this women's round, notably the first three boulders, is that there's actually not a single foothold on the climb. Yeah, a lot of risk uh, introduced through standing on volumes, a lot of slip potential. Uh, I think we, we've seen it happening quite a bit. Um, people standing on volumes, not quite sure exactly where they're supposed to stand. Uh, and as a result, kind of uh, introducing some confusion to the climbers and resulting in slips and falls. Um, not in a bad way, but you know, uh, help, helping us out quite a bit. That's for sure. And, and Jeremy, we've had a couple of folks here on the, the YouTube link uh, as also in person. Uh, what does a perfect round of climbing look like to you? Male, female, uh, just in general, what is a finals round? What is a perfect round in terms of the root setter's perspective look like to you? Um, I think diversity is the, the name of the game for us at this point. Um, you know, way back when it was who is the strongest nowadays, we're looking at who is the most well-rounded climber. Um, that means being able to execute uh, really delicate slab moves, powerful moves, roof climbing, um, you know, these kind of tricky, weird body position dependent jumps. Um, and I think, I think this round really, really showcases that. Uh, there's quite a bit of trickery and weirdness uh, followed up with some power, a um, little bit of coordination, and across the board, the climbers really had to show up with uh, a full set of skills, not just being specialist or being strong, uh, but they ultimately need to be the best rock climber to, to succeed tonight. Very, very true. And, and considering that, uh, who would you consider to be the most all-around climber here today? Nora Tree getting really close here. Let me see. Hold on just one second, Jeremy. Oh, oh so close gosh. to slipping off that Jimmy Sandstone Kaiju. 
Uh, Nora, Nora's a really young climber from the Northeast, uh, and I mean, I think in the youth circuit, she's really showing up and, and showing that she's a, a contender for the future, if not now. Um, you know, we haven't seen much from Natalia. She's been on the first boulder at this point. Um, I, I think Natalia is just one of one of the bright, bright future stars of our sport. Uh, Megan Lynch right now getting on, getting started on women's two, uh, seasoned youth competitor. Uh, she, she's, she's seen all of this stuff. She knows what she needs to do. Uh, it's just a matter of executing for, for Megan. Um, and Nora, Nora, here she goes again, getting up there, just motoring through the first moves. And, uh, yeah, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an obvious um, advantage to growing up in gyms and, and, and knowing these holds and knowing what they need to do, um, but it not being super obvious. Like, they're, they're, you, can, you can see them sorting things out while on the wall. Uh, and it's really cool to watch them actually actually figure it out. Here, here goes Nora. Come on, there we go. Yeah. Nora Chi, top on women's two. Not much time left to spare. Emma Hunt here on women's four. Having a little bit of trouble left. Ten seconds on the timer. Not quite yeah, enough looks time like she's to figure it out. Yeah. We're gonna see the men's competitors here. You got uh, Ben Hanna and Bobby Taff. Bobby Pittman Taff, is that right? Or Taff, Taff Pittman. Pittman. Taff, Taff Pittman. Pittman, I'm sorry. Uh, Bobby is showing up this week. Yeah, My lord, he is a strong event kid. was impressive. All the root setters, all the competitors uh, were very, very impressed with Bobby's ability to throw down during qualifiers. Uh, really only shown up by Nathaniel Coleman and honestly we're talking about a score of Nathaniel Coleman in the qualifying round with a total score of 238.395 followed by Bobby Taft Pittman 238.394 that's how close these climbers are Nathaniel Coleman being as you know as we've mentioned uh, the USA climbing uh, Olympian uh, moving forward here in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics uh, Bobby Taft Pittman, maybe not too far off from that. Looking incredibly comfortable and casual on this slab. Having climbed on this thing, that is not a comfortable position to stand in. Uh, let's see what he does here. That that volume is shockingly slippery. You can kind of see it. Oh, there we are. Oh, he's off. Yeah, Jeremy, give me a little bit of perspective here. So you spent a lot of time here on the men's round. You've uh, you've actually set. Uh, open bouldering national championships last year in 2018. You have a very good idea of how these athletes perform. Um, give, me, give us a little insight into what you were thinking about during the, uh, the forewarning process, both during qualifiers, finals. What do you expect to see? Just, just give us a little bit of uh, perspective. Ben Hanna getting up high here. Uh, this was an interesting round. I think that uh, in years past, We've relied a lot on risky boulders. We've relied a lot on coordination boulders. Uh, this round across the board has been a combination of all of those things. These, uh, if you were a specialist again, same thing we were talking about in the women's round a minute ago. Uh, if you're a specialist in any one thing, you're you're not going to succeed in this round. Uh, the 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 men really had to show up with some physical physical boulders. Um, as we're seeing Bobby right now on this uh, weird dihedral start. Being strong is not helping anybody on it. Uh, there's some trickery, uh, as you can see. I guess you can't quite see it, but there's a there's a, there's a there's a band of dual techs on that black volume that you're standing on. If you place your foot an inch in the wrong spot, you're you're out of there. There's no way your foot's sticking to it. Um, from from past experiences, you know we've we've tried shutting people down with strength. We've tried to uh, err on the side of risk and coordination style things uh, I think what we've kind of all come to the conclusion on is that we need to introduce a little bit of all of it and make sure that everybody's practicing everything um, I think this is it Ben Hanna getting up high one last move let's see him do it come on Ben oh, oh. crowd getting really into it here as the Southern Grit Championships and USA Climbing National Cup Series around third and final stop here in Memphis is beginning to wrap up. Nathaniel is our last competitor for the men's round, competing here on men's number two. We have seen a few tops uh, by a few other competitors. Nathaniel, surprisingly, not flashing men's two. This is in his wheelhouse, but it just goes to show you how difficult 
these rock climbs are, not just in a power sense, not just in a, a hand strength or a finger strength sense, but an entire uh, physical and mental ability. Uh, you have to be at your absolute top A game to summit these boulder problems. Especially with only four minutes to figure them out, and uh, it's one thing, five minutes, excuse me, uh, five minutes to figure them out. It's one thing to come out, look at them, and have an idea of what you're doing. Uh, but with the, the bright lights, the crowd, the pressure, uh, being last out for Nathaniel, yes, like you said, this, this boulder's in within Nathaniel's wheelhouse, and honestly, I, personally, I thought he was going to flash it. Um, but uh, it just goes to show that, you know, like, they are human, and uh, these, these, these boulders are are quite difficult and uh, they're, they're tricky. You know, here goes Nathaniel what, making one of the harder moves look incredibly casual. And we got Ben Hanna getting up high here. He's been here before. Crowd Come is on, behind man. him. It. Oh, oh, just slips out of the kilter. Wake up pocket. Nathaniel styling up men's two. Nathaniel looking incredibly comfortable here. Yeah, the buddy. unit holds. Unit, another one of our NCS sponsors. He put in some work there, and it was at the buzzer. I believe there was just about one and a half seconds left when Nathaniel topped that boulder. You could hear it in the crowd. Everybody was pretty excited to see him top. I think people expected a flash, but hey, that's how things go in these events, right? Absolutely. Nora Chi now on women's four. Cody, thanks for bringing me in. I'm going to hand things back to Sarah Filler to get back into this. Jeremy, uh, thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Appreciate being here and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Megan making moves on women's three, achieving that kilter kaiju sloper. Shaped by Jimmy Webb. Surging out to that 15 point bonus hold, that flat hold dual text crimp. It is not great. You can see her there grabbing it, re chalking, and saying, All right, time to pull. Tic tacking her feet around. There's not quite enough there to achieve the finish hold. Top of the boulder, Natalia Grossman, women's two. She is putting in work. Nora, Nora taking a second here on women's number four, trying to suss out her, her beta to get through the rest of this. She has a bit of time left, so it's a nice break for her. And we have here none other than uh, NCS finalist Sierra Blair Coyle hopping into the booth here with us. Sierra, as you know, has just hopped off the wall. Um, no stranger to competitive events. We're going to get a little bit of her perspective here on this event, uh, past events, Olympic events in the future. Uh, SBC, thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. Sierra, uh, what did you think? What did you think about the round? How the, the athletes are competing, how the boulders are set? Give us a little bit of perspective uh, from the athlete side of things. We've, we just had Jeremy Ho in here talking a little bit about the root setter side of things. Uh, tell us a little bit about the insight of, of what you've had to deal with both in the qualifying event as well as the finals here. I would say qualifiers was a little bit strange, just kind of like how it broke up between boulders. Um, it was kind of like Natalia was really solidly ahead and then everyone was pretty tight, second through probably down to 10th place. So um, it was really tight. And then in finals, I think that the boulders were really fun, probably a little too easy. And that sounds weird, you know, coming from someone who didn't flash all the boulders or anything, but uh, everyone is just doing, you know, like so well. Uh, separation is good, which is always a good thing, but I think they could have uh, pumped it up a little bit harder and uh, gotten some more try-hard going on from everyone. Fair enough. Uh, what did you think throughout the uh, throughout the event weekend? What was the most difficult part about, about the event as a competitor from a competitor standpoint? I mean, for me, I think the most difficult part was the red point this time. Uh, usually in red points, it's kind of like 
for me, it's like you usually get what you need to get done in the first hour and a half, maybe two hours. And I was climbing up until hour three and pretty much everyone is doing that except for Natalia on the women's side. So just having to climb for, you know, three hours and you're just trying boulders and trying to get five extra points wherever you can just to bump yourself into that next round. Right, right. And so what we see here on women's three, Megan Lynch matching that Kilter Kaiju Sloper surging out to the dual text flat hold 15 point bonus hold right underneath the high point logo throwing her knee on she's got about a minute left to figure this move out and she does megan lynch ladies and gentlemen achieving women's three we have nora chi feeling a little bit frustrated on women's four sbc what did you feel on women's four throughout that process when you turned around looked at the wall uh what did you think about this boulder problem and how it was going to climb for you? Uh, so the boulder problem itself is pretty self-explanatory, not too tricky. Um, and I would say up until you get to 15, like the pull from 10 to 15 is a little bit harder, but not impossible. And then uh, it really just pumps up from 15 to the top, I'd say like, and it's one of those moves that you know if you stick the top, you're going to be like, oh, that wasn't too bad, you know, but when you can't get it, you're like, oh, it's so far away. Right. And so what Sierra is specifically talking about too, that purple crimp, it's actually a very, very similar hold. Uh, to women's two, the 15 point bonus and the 10 point bonus, uh, very, very similar hold, but you're surging around that lip on women's four to the 15 point bonus hold in that Kamiki, uh, Crimp Gaston, uh, very difficult move and through the top, especially after you've climbed three boulders, uh, not, not an easy thing to do. Uh, Sierra, any words to our viewers uh, moving forward uh, about the Olympics? and uh, what your thoughts are on, on that process and, and how things are going in that realm. I mean, I think it's going to be really interesting. Uh, you know, first of all, big congrats to everyone who's qualified, especially, you know, the Americans, Brooke Gravitu, Kyra Kondi, and Nathaniel Coleman. Uh, we still have spot, a spot for one more man to qualify, so hopefully we're going to fill that quota. And, um, yeah, I hope everyone is, you know, following along and cheering everyone along, obviously. Special place in the hearts for the Americans. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really different, but I think the combined format has been really weird and I think finally it's starting to feel less weird to everyone who's training it and competing in it so I think that's cool it's um you know not as foreign to everyone anymore fair enough and before you go is there any uh any male athlete with there that one spot being left uh Nathaniel taking that first spot is there anyone that you think is a front runner or maybe a dark horse that could uh could snipe that spot moving here forward uh with the first uh, qualifier pre-qualifying event happening in Plano, Texas, and the qualifying event with the Pan Ams happening at Center One. Uh, who do you think might take that spot? I mean, honestly, it's so hard to say. Um, obviously, Zach Gala is really strong. Drew Rana is really strong. Sean Bailey's really strong. I mean, they're just so many strong guys. Um, I'd like to see, like, Clay Gordon from Arizona take the spot, of course, because we train together. But um, I don't know, man. Whoever takes it, you know, they're going to deserve it. And it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sierra. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Bobby Taft Pittman on men's four, just not snatching the 10 point bonus hold that very, very sharp, very, very small Kumiki crimp. Down pulling for sure, not friendly. Nathaniel making moves on men's three. I believe if Nathaniel summits men's three, he will have absolutely no difficulty on men's four, and that will set him at the very, very tip top of the podium here at Southern Grit Championship NCS Finals here in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, and we still have yet to see a top on men's three, so it'll be real, real good to see that. I know Nick is running around here, uh, definitely hoping for a top on that boulder problem. That was actually uh, a huge part of his uh, work for the week was this this specific boulder problem uh he was excited to set the slab a lot of times with especially with men's boulder problems there's this uh little bit of a predisposition to you know the men's get the boulder problem where it's thug and pulling and and uh lots of power and the women's are technical and tic tacky and and subtle um and so it's really nice from a root setter's perspective as well as a competitor's perspective to really find who that best competitor is 
not necessarily who can do the best thing for what they're expected to do. And that's how we find our, our top, top athletes. And that's something Nick was really searching for throughout this event week. Yeah, and I mean, one of our goals as route setters, again, is like to test out like all different aspects of climbing. So like what Cody's saying and not just like having the men just like pull through everything. And that's like very well demonstrated on men's three with this slab. It's so balancy and technical. And everyone's seeming to have a hard time getting through that. Not to say that they're not well-rounded or incapable of doing it. It's just a hard goal there in general. One minute remaining here for both Nathaniel and Bobby. Kind of surprised Bobby here not doing the first move on that attempt of men's four. Bobby, uh, other Florida climbers, as well as his mom, Sherry, uh, very, very supportive of him. And uh, with him just moving to Colorado in particular, we're looking for some promising things from Bobby here in the future. Um, really putting all of his efforts into rock climbing and into the future of rock climbing here. Bobby Taft Pin and finishing up on men's four. Yeah, and I mean, going off that a little bit more is he a lot. Moved to Boulder pretty recently, and I've set like a handful of events uh, for him as well. And it's just always oh, so impressive to like watch how strong he is and like how casual he pulls through. In the top. Nicely standing up on this volume too and like taking her time on lining up to get to this finish hold. And pretty, pretty quick top for her. Megan having a time with women's four, just trying to figure out how to get through the top end of that. Yeah, mo most of these top holds are like not that friendly too. And it's impressive to watch them uh, work through these top two holds. And especially with kicking out to that volume, it's like not that positive and not that prominent. So kicking out to that and like making use of that is is a whole other thing. You have to keep a decent amount of tension once you're getting through that. Blocks volume. Yeah, looking real strong on those. Very, very strong competitor. Making work, easy work of that Gaston with the 15 point bonus goal. She could achieve this top. Just so close. Kind of casually standing on that volume, too. It looks like if she went a little bit slower, uh, she would have been able to maybe match that blocks volume. If she found that body position. And then been able to pop out to that final cheetah hold. She looked really, really close there. Yeah, and as Cody was saying earlier, like these holds, it's like all the climbers are running through, these boulders are getting a little bit worse as we see. She's trying to brush through, um, trying to put some effort into having these like be a little bit more friendly for her, her last few attempts here, or hopefully last attempt. Hopefully she stops it and just go. She's got into this final, likely final attempt. Hopefully final attempt in that she tops it. Let's see it. Oh, and she slowly matches, gets so close to the final fold. One, one more go? One more go. She got one more go. So, so fast with that. 
She has this bottom part pretty dialed, so she could probably work her way pretty quickly through that. Looking back to check that time. Getting through the bottom of this as quick as she can. So 10 close. seconds and remaining. Pressure is on. Yeah. She gets her foot out. She can match it. Oh, and she's so close. So close. Megan Lynch. In the final hold, she made some serious, serious work of the bottom half of that boulder problem. Just not quite enough left in the tank to finish it up. Nathaniel Coleman, future U.S. Olympian, pulling onto this boulder. Be see if he, yeah, let's see if he can flash this. Be surprised if he would not flash this boulder problem. Very much in his wheelhouse. Pure power, pure strength. And right there, falls off. Goes to show you how difficult this weekend has been for all of the athletes, future Olympians included. Be real excited to see another top on this boulder, especially with like Nathaniel being the last male out. We have seen two tops of this boulder, both flashes, Zach Gala and Dylan Barks, first and second place respectively, if all things were to remain the same. Ben Hanna stepping into the booth here with us right now, getting the athlete perspective. Ben Hanna, thank you so much for stepping in. Another Southwest okay. athlete. Uh, How's right it going? Alongside Sierra Blair Coyle. Ben, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Ben, what did you think of this men's finals round? Oh, it was so good. The whole round was amazing. Um, I think the boulders all hit really different, but important styles. Pretty much all perfect difficulties, even though no one tops number three. I think it was probably the perfect difficulty. Just one of those boulders that, oh wow, Nathaniel is getting up there. He is cruising. Here he goes. Up this boulder. Oh yeah. And he knows that hold. Oh, and he's flopping around. Hold is 10 points. It's not as good as you would want it to be. It's not. You it's really not want a it jug. to be a jug, and it's not a jug it's at not all. A it's jug. not good. Kilter is known for having a large series of holds, and the whole variety of them can be very, very, very juggy to very, very, very slopey, and they all look the same. Yeah, they can they be difficult. 15 for of those exact same holds that they go from roof jug to not grabbable. Right, and what does that look like for you as an athlete when you're coming up and you turn around on a boulder? And you look at the top of 25, whether that's in a flash format or you turn around during the competition and you're on men's four, you've already climbed three boulders, and you look around and you say, is that the sloper, is that the jug? What does that look like to you? Uh, I was, I, I knew which one that was. I'm pretty familiar with their hold set. Um, and I was able to, like, I, as an athlete, like, I know to walk away really far away from the boulder so I can see into that hole and see how far back it goes. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit bigger than it was. Uh, so that was really disappointing. <laughs> Right, a little bit of strategy um, there by Ben Hanna. Yeah, but you can tell, I think all the jugs in that series right now are granite, and so like they have that granite texture inside of them. Right. Whereas this one's just um, smooth inside, so you know it's not gonna be as good as the granite ones. Not very good, especially considering that the, the left hand hold there is one of those very, very small cheetah jibs. Uh, it is on the textured side of the hold, if you can kind of see that. Uh, it might be a little bit of a far angle shot for you to catch that 15 point bonus hold. But it is a very, very, very poor hold. And especially when you're driving by to that finish, you wish you had a better hold and you don't get it. Nathaniel Coleman, last athlete, surging up through 15, achieving that shooter hold we just talked about. Flipping the hand. He it. knows what he's got to do. He's got it. He has it. For he's sure. got it. Nathaniel Coleman, ladies and gentlemen, the future U.S. Olympian, has just topped the last and final boulder of the USAC National Cup Series. One Bouldering event. Ben, give us a little bit of insight to the, uh, the qualifying round, if you don't mind. You've actually competed a number of events uh, the past few years, Southern Grit Series, as well as USA Climbing's National Cup Series. Give us a little perspective as the round is wrapped up now, uh, how things have looked, how things have been looking, and what to look at at the future uh, at these events. Uh, I, was, 
I was really impressed with the setting um, for all these boulders.